Thanks for tuning in again to The Hateful Geeks. This week, we're going to be talking about Wonder Woman, and then we're going to be talking about some fake-ass geeks by the name of Tim who haven't seen the movie yet. So, Tim, please exit the room. All right. All right, so before we get into Wonder Woman, we're actually going to cover some other topics. That's these fucking poser geeks here that uh, two men in this room right now, Tim and Sweeney, have not seen Logan. Well, strike one. And (laughs) Tim has not seen Wonder Woman yet. All right, that's a pass. That's only been a week, but still opening weekend. You should have seen it. Yeah, man. But there's no excuse for Logan, so... I'll give you no excuse for Logan. Wonder Woman, it's only been a week, and I just haven't had the time to. Oh, my God. Like, you're breaking my friggin' heart. Like, no, no. You should have seen both of these movies by now. Honestly, I haven't seen Logan because you guys left and went without me. Oh. Oh. And I felt a little sad. Wow. Pick your balls off the floor, please. Let's continue. (laughs) You you were assuming I have balls. Touche, sir. Exactly. All right. Yeah, what we're going to talk about, uh, let's kick this off, and uh, we're going to go over to the Sony Marvel Universe and talk about the casting for Venom. And it was none other than Tom Hardy. I never even would have thought about this decision, but I fucking love this decision. <laughs> I I am a huge Venom fan, and I love Eddie Brock. You're not a fan, you're like... a the sociopath. A, a fan in. girl. You, yeah. have a, you have a dog <laughs> named I, Eddie. Yeah. I love Eddie Brock's Venom. So I've missed him, and he's just recently come back in the comics. And then when they were like, we're going to cast him in this movie, and it's going to be Tom Hardy, I was like, yes. 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 Why didn't I think about this? Oh, my God, yes. Mm. But are you concerned <laughs> that no. he might use a weird voice? No. Like Bane. <laughs> I wonder what would break first Your spirit or your body Are we going to get squeaky voice venom No no, it, it can't the, I'm going to say this It cannot get worse than Topher Grace It can't <laughs> Not on this particle wood I'm about, it, it cannot get that bad I'm about to show how old I am But when I was growing up In like high school uh, Middle school era Like in the 90s basically I thought that Howie Long Would have been an amazing Eddie Brock He's got like that fucking build and he's like, you know, blonde hair. You know, like, the crew cut. The yeah, the crew cut, like the, the flat top crew cut is kind of just. Dude, Brock Lesnar. Yeah, Brock I mean, Lesnar. He even has the word Brock in there. I was band. like, I would actually be okay with it, even though he probably can't act his way out of a wet paper bag. But, but Tom Hardy's amaze balls, man. <laughs> yes. Dude, I'm sold. I'm completely sold. Like, I was worried, like, oh, they're, they're saying there's going to be no ties to Spider Man in this film. I, I was like, that. oh, man, how are they going? Oh. Tom Hardy, cool. Okay, I'm there. So you're just take fine take now? my money. Take it. I will see it. <laughs> I still have a serious problem with there not being a connection to Spider-Man. Venom is Venom I because mean, of Spider-Man. That's why you have comics, right? You have a hero and you have a villain. And if you're going to talk about one, you need the other. Like, there's no... So you can't split them up like that. You can't that's like me- having a Joker movie. Well, they kind of did this with Suicide Squad yeah, without yeah. Batman. <laughs> yeah, but I, I see the point. The, the symbiont left Spider-Man... Before there was even like a venom, like it goes from Spider-Man to Venom, and the the reason why he has spider powers as Venom, the reason why he knows everything about Spider-Man, the reason why Spider-Man's senses don't tingle when Venom's around, it's all because of Spider-Man. You know, they actually revealed why that is because the symbionts don't actually wish harm on Spider-Man. He wants to rejoin with Spider-Man and make him more powerful in its mind. So that's why he doesn't sense danger because. The symbiote doesn't actually want to do him harm, and that's later. They reveal that later on in like the, the Venom comics. It's kind of creepy. A little bit. The, would you would you classify the symbiote as a stage five clinger? <laughs> <laughs> like you're you're getting a little clingy right now. I'm <laughs> like, gonna, I need some me time. I'm gonna need you to stop like reading my thoughts and like maybe get out of here for a few minutes. Cool so, thing. So the symbiote is staying, and I'll be watching you. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Or any like you know '90s song that. Came around. That was always creepy. The 90s were a very stocky musical era. Yes. Extremely. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, 
I did. I squealed with joy at this casting. Squeal. That's not I all squealed. you squealed about. No, Have you just... seen Andy squeal? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> was that? Wow. That's all I get. I hate what, to be this, in like, bed with you. What are you, a Southern Belle all of a sudden? Uh, oh, oh, me. I'm, I'm behind. Uh-oh. I'm feeling so verklempt right now. Oh, <laughs> give me the vapors. That's the, that's Wait a, a second. <laughs> that's that, not... So uh, up next after that, uh, Justice League recently had a an announcement of a change in directors here at the end uh, due to very tragic reasons. So just shout out to Zack Snyder and hope that uh, him and his family are doing all right. Um, but none other than Joss Whedon, which I would like to say I kind of talked about that in our last podcast was... Joss was being brought in for Batgirl, so I was like, I wouldn't be surprised if he was brought in for the reshoots of Justice League. And he was already brought in on the reshoots for Justice League before this announcement was even made. So I'm kind of excited to see what kind of tonal shift this will happen. But do you think just having some reshoots, it'll change that much? I mean, I think this is going to still be a Zack Snyder movie. Oh, it'll definitely be Zack Snyder. But with Joss, like, helping with, like, creative decisions, because Joss is a fan. You can tell from the Avengers he's a fan. He's at least familiar with the source material. He might not, like, be a hardcore collector, but he at least understands the dichotomy of the characters. So, I don't see, and Zack Snyder does that, too. But Joss giving his, like, third eye assistance here is only going to make it a better film. The two of them are very similar, but also, albeit very talented actors. Yeah, but I, I don't know how I feel about Joss being involved because I've seen the Avengers. You know, like I've seen that like you know six guys come together who have absolutely no reason to hang out, and then <laughs> they make a movie and they fight an army of robots. You just, you just like, you just like vitrified the Justice League and Avengers. You're like, meh, these guys. I know. I'm yeah. saying like, I don't want that formula. I have no concern about I don't want the well, formula. I want think, something different. Do you think it's because you're mixing worlds, mixing universes here? You think you're gonna, he's going to make it like Marvel? I guess, yeah. I guess I'm concerned that I'm going to see more my Marvelized DC universe. Well, then it might actually be good. That's not even remotely true. The Age of Ultron <laughs> is the friggin' exact copy of the first Avengers movie. They are the same film. It's not. But you got aliens and Loki We've here, talked about this, And still. you got Ultron and robots in the second one. It's the same damn movie. We've talked about we this fight the several beginning, times. And then we're friends again. So you're telling me you don't want to go see a superhero movie because they fight a bad guy? Oh, I don't want to go see a superhero movie where it's literally the same plot point every single every time. Every superhero is the same plot point every time. They have a villain. They go fight the villain. But I don't want to see like them fighting armies of stuff. I want to see like them doing something a little bit more. Hell, like maybe a one-on-one ba- battle. I, I think you're going to get a battle with parademons. Probably going to yeah, see right. an army of parademons. But you've already seen. You've already seen the trailers. I, I'm a I'm a DC it's fan a, boy. It's the invasion story. It's the invasion <laughs> is what I'm talking about. I, I don't want to see another mass invasion as the villain. I want to see just a villain that is so incredibly. Like, I don't need. Dark side, I'm very happy about. Don't get me wrong. But we're going to get it. We're going to get the invasions coming I, I get, with I, Steppenwolf. I, I get what you're saying. You don't want you want like the the team versus one rather than here's here's Ultron and then an army of or army of robots. You just want five versus one. Yeah, I want like a like I'm sure like a Thanos fight is going to be very like that. Aren't they, that's probably when I'll see that uh, when Infinity War finally happens. So it'll be Thanos just <clears throat> single handedly just bitch slapping the entire Marvel universe. So DC, if, if they're going to do something, it's going to have to be grand like that. If they throw another, here's a small army, like Suicide Squad did, and here's a big bad villain behind said army, I, I'm just like, I've seen this movie. I've seen it four times now, actually. I would want I, I want a different direction and a different plot structure. Do you think it's too soon for that big villain? No. We've only gotten a matchup of two. We've been waiting, what, since like nine, since 2001? Yeah, but... 2001, we've been waiting to see like... The we haven't fight. seen it on screen. We haven't seen this world on screen 2008. before. 2008. 2008? Was that eight, when Iron yeah, Man 1 came Yeah, was when out? Iron Man yeah. came out. Oh, well. <laughs> no, no, what I'm saying, I'm saying for DC, I'm not saying for the Marvel. I'm saying for DC, we've only got two, we've gotten two of the new universe films. Well, we have three now, actually. Right, we have three now, but oh, there's a fourth in there, too. Four. Oh God! Two, yeah. yeah. So, um, God damn, the issue is there. Is, are we? You think it's too soon for a giant villain like that? 
we haven't really developed these characters. We haven't really... I mean, yes, if you read the comics and you know everything... At this point in time, they can't escape it. It's going towards Dark Side. We're going to see an army of parademons. We're going to see Dark Side. I'm going to see this movie again. I accept that fact. Yeah, but okay. If you're going to do this to me again, I need my characters to be fleshed out and to have... Like, and a that's, what, that's why I actually am excited to see Joss Whedon's um, style in this and his play, because... I am. I, I actually liked Batman versus Superman. I enjoyed it. One thing that I kind of want to see happen is in Batman versus Superman, they had no time to build like a chemistry together. It was literally, hey, here we are. All oh, shit. Here we go. We got to fight over their mamas. Like Mom. it was Martha. Why do you say that name? It just felt like it was missing something with the the Trinity of the DC universe. So I'm hoping in this next one with Joss Whedon actually getting involved, you're going to start to get some of that that bonding, some of that uh, play off of each other, that banter, that kind of like where it feels like they're actually a team. Well, that's the cool thing in the comics. Like they're like best friends. Yeah. So they I want to like, see that now. Batman well, and Superman are the only well, they, nobody else. I think better. I think to build that kind of bond, you need a comedic element to it, yes. like comedic relief to it. And Batman, Superman, or Wonder Woman are not that comedic group. Well, yeah, that, the Trinity is a very serious group. But I also think this, too. I think we saw the Trinity too soon. I think ba- oh, Batman, Batman agree, versus yeah. Superman could have been just Batman and Superman. Mm-hmm. And you could have done the after credit scene of Wonder Woman, maybe. But I, I think, think you uh, had no time to develop that I think, yeah, I mean, we, relationship. Yeah, we kind of discussed that in the last podcast where Wonder Woman didn't really need to be in Batman versus Yeah. Superman. Had Wonder Woman come out before Justice <laughs> Agree, 100%. Um, like, right there. Sure. You've already fixed so so sure. much of your continuity so, issues. I think I've actually figured out what the the thought process behind this. And hear me out on this one. You start with Superman's solo film to launch your your uh, your universe because Superman is the flag bearer of DC. He was the first comic, Action Comics, number one. Batman came later, and then Wonder Woman came after that as well. I, but you're going to start a Justice League universe. You have to pay equal respect to the Trinity. That's Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman. So if your Dawn of Justice is literally the Dawn of the Justice League, if you're going to take it literally, Wonder Woman has to have a role. She is that is a triumvirate equal group of leadership of the Justice League between the three of them. So I, I she can has understand. to be there. I can understand that, but the movie was called Batman versus Superman. You know what I mean? Because Wonder Woman's get, not stupid enough right. to get into a fight with a hero. And I agree, you know, like, okay, yes, this is Dawn of Justice League. This is our first trinity. You know, that's the Holy Grail. But they wanted to kill Superman so bad. Exactly. They had to bring Wonder Woman in because Batman's just not going to be like, oh, now I'm going to just go find some randoms. They've been wanting to kill Superman in the movie since since Death of Superman came out in 92. (laughs) Fucking Nicholas Cage. We're not going to talk about that one again. Nicholas Cage. That was bad. Oh, God. You will never be Superman. Long hair Nicholas Cage. Oh, yeah. It was creepus. It was like. Sexual predator. It was eight millimeter. It was eight millimeter. Have, have you seen pictures of it was like long hair dressed as Clark Kent? It was. It was like Buffalo named, Bill. He named his son Superman. Kal-El. Shit, you not. He named his kid Kal El. And now I can't do it because Nicolas Cage did it. So thanks, Nicolas Cage. You made that somehow uncool. Appreciated, guy. It's all about the bees. But yeah, I, I think that's going to be a, uh, a an interesting dynamic to look at coming up. So I'm excited to see. Well, and we've already seen a lot in the trailers of how they're kind of, there is that comedic relief. Because A, you had the Flash, which, I mean, we all know, you know, Ezra Barry Miller. Allen is. Ezra well, yeah, but Barry Allen is a, he's a joker. Like, mm-hmm. he's still a young kid. Right. So you're going to get that comedic relief. And if they do bring in the Lantern Corps and Hal Jordan is there, we all know Hal Jordan's a sarcastic asshole. So, I mean, it's going to be dear, amazing. Dear eight pound baby Jesus, I want. <laughs> Green Lantern Force. Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm worried that they're going to Wally West, Ezra Miller's Barry Allen. I don't think so. I mean, I've heard him speak a little bit now, and let, it's very Barry Allen. Let, let me translate, though, that for okay. people who don't know what I just said. So Wally West is the second Flash in the comics. His, and he was the very first kid Flash. And he is not a scientifically minded kid. He's like very, just constantly joking around. He's also kind of a screw up sometimes, but he's fast as hell and he loves to joke around. He t- takes absolutely nothing seriously. Barry Allen, the first Flash, if we don't include Jay Garrick, is well, he's he's still a forensics. He's a forensics cop. He's very, he's very serious when it comes to his job. Um, he has like the humor, but it's not to a point of where Wally West is like the class clown. Right. Mm-hmm. So I'm worried that Ezra Miller, who is Barry Allen, is going to class clown it up too much. Well, and we got to think he still is pretty young in this rendition of the Justice League. 
as long as he stays like a a forensics cop, right? And they still like show him like I don't know Doing CSI something. Yeah, CSI, CSI is seen. Show do me. Do you think what the he's that old yet though? Yeah, he could be young CSI. I mean, those kids just come out. Do you of, like, think he's like, he's like college? <laughs> he could be like he could be college graduate. Or okay, like, starting off at because he does look the very Central young. City Police Department. Like he's a rookie. Okay, you know, I'd be cool with that. Yeah, that's fine. And then you know, I don't know much about Cyborg. I mean, I know. Teen Titan Cyborg. Booyah. Booyah. Uh, I, but I don't think we're going to get Booyah Cyborg. I think Booyah Cyborg might be a little inappropriate culturally now, but it is what it is. Yeah. So I do, uh, I do like uh, I do like the idea of Cyborg. The character is very cool. It is. He's a football star. He got injured, came back a total badass. Thanks to a, a mother box, I guess. Is yes. Yeah. Ever seen. And that's actually his official origin, even in like the comic books now. He's like a mother box fused human being. Yeah. And... Hacking, kind of a cool power, I guess. Well, I mean, he can get into anything globally. He can hack Brother Eye. Right, yeah. So it's a very useful tool when you have a mobile Brother Eye. You know, and the fact that he is his his ability, he actually can change himself into different weapons, which is pretty cool. I don't like Green Lantern, but he, without the ring. He wasn't always a Justice League mainliner. Though. No, he no, was not. Um, no. He was definitely a Teen Titans first, but now in like every new rendition since New 52, mm-hmm. Cyborg is officially a Justice League member. Yeah, yeah Jeff Johns good. loves Cyborg. Yep. I mean, this guy does. He loves Cyborg. He's all about it, so he's he's bringing them to the, the league now. So we'll see what we get. And you were just a little little bit of trivia um, that I, when I watched Batman vs Superman again a couple weeks ago, didn't realize that the first couple times I saw it, that uh, his dad, Cyborg's dad, is Miles Dyson in Terminator 2. Sil- Silas Stone? Are we yep. sure about that? Wow. That's freaking great. So we'll see how this develops with a new director behind some things. I mean, I, I'm thinking it's just reshoots. I'm, it's not going to be a major change to the whole feel of the movie, but... I wonder if we'll be able to tell the different parts. I mean, we've already seen the trailers. We know we'll see at least a parademon. There's at least one. Well, and, it, and for our next topic we're going to talk about, and the Wonder Woman, the previews, we did see several parademons. Like, several. Like, Aquaman jumps in, like, three of them. And, you know, he throws a spear through yeah, two of them. Off yeah. The off the Batmobile. Right? Yeah. It looks you like know, an invasion. But, yeah, and the, the Batmobile Son of a bitch. turns into a wall climber, and that cave and start shooting things down i'm like what what do you, this is awesome do you think the parademons invading is like the justice league war story where they're coming looking for them i feel boxes? like this is justice league war this is new 52's justice league starting point where yeah. it's an invasion of a Apo- from apocalypse with a k and a p yes <laughs> <laughs> but yeah no i think this is definitely like the the vanguard of of dark side's army and steppenwolf's going to get turned away by the forming of the justice league and i bet you a thousand dollars that superman will be back and he will like he is dead right now yes but let's be honest we're not we're, we we're not children we know that superman will be yes. brought back alive well uh, henry cavill he posted a picture and this was a while ago about a year ago on his instagram of a little section of the Superman suit from this Justice League movie, and it's black. It's black and white? It's black. So, oh, it's like Phantom Zone suit? It's no, it's when, when he, he resurrects, returns man. from the uh, dead. Okay. He's got the mullet and the black and white suit. <laughs> it's, like, it's a black, black and silver. Like, okay. Yeah. I thought you meant like the Phantam Zone colors they get. Yeah. Okay. No, so it's... This is regenerative. It's regenerative like a, suit. Like a yes. medical suit. Okay, so are we going to have the mullet? Oh, uh, God. You, I, no. I, I, no, no, think about it. If he's still alive, his hair is growing. If he comes out of that coffin alive, he better have He has to have longer hair. Maybe so, not a mullet. Uh, Henry Cavill. Maybe, maybe I don't hair. think it'll be business in the front <laughs> and party in the back. I think it'll just be all like party, just party everywhere. So, so, so party we're going to see Henry Cavill with the, uh, the, Ch- the Chuck hair. Norris. Yeah, shit. Yeah. Why not? He. I mean, I'm pretty sure that'd be a pretty sweet fight. It would. I mean, yeah. This is Superman we're talking about. He's going to come out looking pristine. <laughs> <laughs> on fleek. And he's hoping yeah, so. Show, show your... You, you, just, you think he's going to come out like some kind of golden guy. Just like, like, I am fucking Superman. And, it's and just then he's like, going to also look like he ain't shaved in 12 months. <laughs> he's got to like use a mirror to reflect his heat vision back on his own skin to be able to shave. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's a good point. No razor can, can no, slice the he's always smoothly skinned. It's because he sits in the mirror and he eye beams his own image in the mirror to shave. He burns his own hair off. That's how B.A. Superman is. He burns his beard off. He gives himself a like, trollic. So how does he manscape? 
Same oh, way, bro. <laughs> Same way, bro. Come don't, at me, bro. Don't miss. <laughs> Can't fuck with soups. Lois walks in and startles him at the wrong moment. Snip. Mm. Oh. oh, God. He shoots himself in the eye. <laughs> like, you always blame me, Clark. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. So now, Tim, since you haven't seen Wonder Woman, get out. Now you must go. Go on now. Go watch yeah. the Cavs I'm lose. I'm going to go upstairs and watch the Cavs game. Uh, We're in a white fang so, you. Go on. Toodles. Get. We, there's, there is a chance we will hear Tim yell uh, about the Cavs game. Especially how shitty they've been playing. Mm. And we're from Ohio. I don't play so. hoopy ball. I don't know what to tell you on that one. All right. So, Wonder Woman. All one. right. So. Wait a minute, Tim. Oh, he's still upstairs. Earmuffs, He's Tim. going. He's going. Earmuffs. Thank you. Bye. The Justice League, now with these changes. And now after seeing Wonder Woman, I am stoked again for Justice League. Because oh, Wonder God. Woman was... Amazing. All right, let's just get this on the table. Who here had feels like hardcore oh, feels? Hardcore feels. Oh my feels. god! Yeah, See, I had feels. Seeing a, I'm just gonna say it. Seeing a woman as a main character in a superhero movie where she's a badass and just like can take on anything, and they all tell her she can't do. It's it's the it's it's the, the embodiment of women. Just it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. I love it. I I, sh- I crap you not. I think my my wife and I both might have like choked up a bit, oh. especially during like the you know the oh, the training and like the growing up and like the the family of it all. And like when um and and Ty- and what, the, what was her aunt Antiope? Antiope, thank you. When Antiope died, oh, yes. felt, yeah, my, well, my well, princess Buttercup became a badass warrior. I know, right? Uh, all the princesses of our lifetime. Yes. Became, as you wish, but uh, even more for me than the growing up aspect of things her first big like fight scene where she's just getting like she's just being a badass walking through this whole field of germans essentially no yeah, man's land no man's land thank no you man's land right now i've seen multiple articles people are calling this one of the most iconic scenes now in comic book movies by far it's I mean, not i don't know about top but it is definitely well, you, top five you get the whole notion of all these men are entrenched will not leave and the one woman that's there gets out of the trench and takes them on. Just goes to, uh, simply due to the fact that there was a town that she knew. There's was, women and children right, there. Yeah. Yes. You're gonna uh, know. Real? Okay, she, I got this. She's like, I'm just gonna do. It. And this is the first time I actually see in the movie where she actually kind of goes against. Maya's like her mother in the beginning. Goes against what her male counterparts at the time wanted to do. I think the cool thing about this character is that the entire film, she is just constantly doing what she thinks is right mm-hmm. regardless of what everyone are, like oh you can't do that he's like uh i can right and thank you so much like that's even a great message for like like not that's not a singularly female message that's oh of course not. Like, you should do what you believe is right at all times and i think seeing this unless you're crazy please don't do <laughs> right. like no it doesn't apply to you if you then, if you need meds i got a gun for that yeah <laughs> exactly andy so but and this was also a scene where when she climbed up out of the trench, she goes up the ladder, she finally takes off that big giant black like robed coat. Yep. And it was Wonder Woman. Yeah. And it's Wonder Woman how I've always like it, the costume her. was perfect. It was flawless. Amazing. And you were just like, yeah. shit's about and the, to go down. And the music, they could not have picked oh yeah. Better music than the immigrant song right there. Oh my goodness. I think this uh this scene in general is uh, amazing for numerous reasons. I mean, it's incredibly iconic. And I hate to say this, Patty, but it felt very Zack Snyder. But that's a compliment. And I mean that in the highest compliment because I, I feel like I, I love Zack Snyder's filming style. He pretty much invented like the 300 speed up bullet time right. going to like the slow motion. And you know what? I'm a sucker for that. I like that the part. darkness of like the, you know, the, the environment was very it, dark. That. That style lends to Wonder Woman. Yeah, because definitely. if you're watching that in in actual time, it's going to look like a blur because she is so fast and so like, agile with her power as well to slow it down so you could see how she's fighting and the lasso, the lasso through, scene and it's epic glory. The just, lasso scene oh. is the best action scene I've seen in a comic book movie in 10 years. Save Man of Steel because all that is perfect. But, <laughs> wow. But in this movie, but, but in for this film, this is by far one of the coolest things. You get like just the camera angles and the moving in and zooming out and the lasso just having like almost a mind of its own, but you know that she's just beating wholesale ass in this like courtyard outside of a church. Mm-hmm. And just, oh, who well, knew? I, I never th- thought I would enjoy a fight with somebody using a lasso. 
Like I think sword and board. I mean, she's got the sword and shield. Yep. But the lasso is probably one of those the amazingly visually cool action scenes of the film. Yeah. And I think what we I think we get the way they kind of portray it now too is like Annie said she's super fast and they slow it way down. But it doesn't feel like you, you like you're not in tune to how fast she is yet. Yeah, like you're just like you think this is okay. This is how she fights real time. Like this is this is she's a little faster than normal people, but she's like it. And then later on, we learn like no, she's like stupid fast, she's bouncing all yeah. over the place. She's half god, right? Which they do touch on in this movie. And I was a little surprised. I didn't know how they were going to do her origin. If they were going to stick true to her mother building her with clay, which that was what her mother told her in the beginning that she built her from clay. I mean, let's just be honest. Both both birthing stories and both like rearing stories are bullshit. Like, what are you gonna believe? Like, I'm made out of clay. I believe that you're the son of a god. Ah, what? Like, but they do a good job here because the reason she told her that she was made out of clay is because she was lying to her. Well, I know, but my my point is that they're just such so random. Like, no normal person. Like Steve Trevor, like reaction to something like that. Oh, of course. It's like you're made out of clay, huh? Yeah, that's not how that works. How about that? (laughs) Yeah, I mean, but that's that's a great that's a great. You know, comparison in the movie, these two sides that you have this woman who is sheltered her whole life essentially from the real world. Now, their world obviously is, you know, they have their own danger and their own, you know, issues, but she's going into world war, like on a scale that she never even knew. Well, I mean, I think she had like some idea. I just don't really understand. Think she thought how big the world really was. Right. Like, we got to go that way. Like, oh, no, we got it. Gotta and then, go and then you have Steve who is. He's seen everything. He's a spy. He's been behind enemy lines. He's seen this shit. He's been the next people dying. Very cynical. Yeah. And so he's like, you can kind of see it when she talks to him, how naive she is and how real he is. And it's a good contrasting. That's a, they did a very good job at, at building those characters up. But Chris Pine did an amazing job. Oh, absolutely. He was he was a spot on Steve Trevor. So um I I've I've been told uh by some of my uh some of my close female friends that I went to school with that um, they felt Steve Trevor was just not like he was just there. For, he had like he took too many scenes like he, he like the whole self-sacrificing thing like like she, but they, that was kind of like going a little bit overboard on a the, the like we can't do it without you type thing. But uh, no, he just had he, Wonder Woman is representing the the hero, the the half god, the full god, the the immortal, the the powerful. Steve is that that character on the screen for the the average human to kind of relate with. Like they have sacrifices in this story as well. What about like the? Scene I didn't see it as like him stealing thunder. Well, he makes her go. He makes her go to the uh, to go. Hey, why don't you go shopping? Well, you also think that the the time we're in right now. Yeah. Now I'm not saying it's I'm not, I'm not saying right? it's appropriate. I'm not saying that you know that the way it was back then is right, but that's the way that's it was. The way it was, yeah. You know, women like asking why there was a woman in the in the office when right. all the generals were right. yeah, like they're like, why is there a woman there? And women were covered back then. I mean, it was you were you were considered a harlot if you wore anything that was not down to your ankles and up to your neck. And that's just that unfortunately that's just how it was. And so I think he I don't think he's trying to enforce that. I think he's trying to take attention away from her. Why? It's because if a lot of people know who she is, know what she can do, he doesn't know what's going to happen. Would you say it's out of a, a, a guy, um, the intent to protect her? No. I think it's the intent that he understands that it's something he has right now is unique and the world is not ready for that. Uh, I would. I want. I want that. Yes, I want to agree with that. I. I wor- I'm concerned of whether or not that was the case. But I, I like your interpretation. Well, better. and I think it, I think that that I think that about him is because he doesn't act in the way men, the other men are responding when he, they see her. Do you think that by the end of the film, Steve Trevor's uh, outlook on uh, the the equal, equality of the sexes is changed, or do well, you think he's still at heart like a, at the a end, man at the time? At the end of the movie, he's not thinking anything. That's a very good point. <laughs> Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! Um. You know, I think he is kind of realizing that this is going to change things. This is going to be the future of things. I mean, even we even see him going through that with the war itself, seeing these technologies that he didn't know existed yet. So I think he definitely does think there's a change in the wind, both on the female front and technology. 
I'll tell you this though. He starts the film as a cynic and he kind of also ends it like a cynic. The, Cause when she's like, he just flat out just tells her like Aries isn't real. Right. This is all stupid. It's maybe it's just in all of our hearts and we're just dark and bad creatures. And like, you know what? Don't get me wrong. That's not, it's a super defeatist outlook on it, but it's not entirely wrong in some cases. We all think too, this is a man who knows how to just take care of it himself. Sure. So he knows he has a plan now. He knows what he can do right now to end what's going on. He's not, he's not going to think about why it didn't work. Why, you know, her killing that guy did not end everybody's suffering and end the war. All he can think about is, what can I okay, do this do shit's going to still happen. Okay. We got to stop this and go do that. Yep. And I think it is a cynical point of view, but it's also, or he's a realist. But okay. So that being said, Steve Trevor being like this very realist, cynical, whatever you want to call it. Just, I am not really a man of like, I believe in God's controlling the fate of mankind. Sure. Not three seconds later, spoiler alert, Ares is real. Yep, we find Ares out. Ares is real. Not only is Ares real, the entire Greek pantheon of gods was real at some point until Ares wrecked their asses. Until he killed them all. And who plays Ares? Remus Lupin from Hogwarts. <laughs> yeah, so we do, it's kind of a good, you know, the way they bring him about the movie, and I will, I'm, I'm going to be honest, I had, I'm not going to say I called it because I'm not that kind of guy. It's like, oh, I called it. Like, I nailed this from the beginning. You can say it. But like, Go ahead. when we were watching, I kept watching and talking about, we, we, he was in parliament. He was controlling the armistice. He was controlling where they went, what they did. I kind of thought to myself, man, is this guy him? Like, is this Aries right here? Because he's like in the middle of everything. And then I didn't, I didn't like confirm it. I, I thought I was just thinking it too much. <laughs> but like, I was like, I, this guy is acting like he's involved in everything. And I think that's something Aries would do. See, I, w- I was buying into the whole, it was the, the what was the German guy's name? Lufendorf or what the the one the that guy, would crack the, the guy the smelling the salt? Did you just say Lufendorf? Yeah, something like that. Something. <laughs> he's a Lufa, Lufendorf. Yeah. So he's, he's Lufendorf, the, the, but the main vampire from Thirty Days. Yes, of Night. yes. Yeah, I was thinking that's probably Ares, but well, I didn't think it was because she gave him that powder that that right there to make him stronger. Well, and I was well, like, that's why because they kept saying that he was weakened from, yeah. But, so that's why I was like, oh, he's it, kind of like, which I was, he was using that to kind of power back up. And, but I would not be able to think that a, a human mortal could create something that would affect a god. Yeah. Because we find out later, too, when they gas something and one woman walks into it, no effect on her whatsoever. Yeah. So. Yeah. Why would he even want like a poison person to make gas from? He's a god. Right. So my, the, the moment I realized, okay, this isn't him. Was when he walked up to her at the the gala and started to dance with her, and then you realized he had no clue who that was. If Ares walked up and started, he would have realized at that moment, at that distance. They they at, tried at to touch, make like, it that way though. Yeah, they tried to like he tried to say some things that you could take both ways. You could take it like, how you could see how she thought he was. Yeah, because she he grabbed her right away, overpowered her to dance with her. Which is a very forceful move, obviously, but so she's assuming, oh, he knows who I am. And then he starts talking about all these things about war and how people are, you know, th- this way and that way. And he quotes It was an excellent red hair. I forget what which ancient poet he quoted, Greek poet. Is it and Cicero? She, I think it might have been Cicero, but she called out immediately, you know. And so like they definitely led a good show trying yeah. to get us to believe that. I don't know, when, when he walked away so easily, I was just like, all right, this isn't him. No way. It's not him. He was yeah. an excellent red hair, and he fooled me until, like, the the, the glass smashy sniffy Yeah, sniff. I just... So, I don't know much about that that woman, the gas... Dr. Poison. Dr. Poison. We're calling her. Is she in the comics? Is that... I, I've never actually... Um, I don't really... This is a throwaway character. Okay. Yeah, I don't really know much of her. The only cool thing that I see floating around about her right now is there's a theory that 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 gas that she kept providing him that he was cracking open and smelling and it was kind of boosting him up. Maybe this is the beginning of Bane's venom. Okay. Maybe. It is DC. Yeah. They could. So if this is somewhere way down the line, kudos to those that are. Right. They think about it. I mean, and if they want to give us a Bane that gets juiced. Yeah. Like a comic book yeah. accurate Bane. Yeah. I can see that. So, I mean, <clears throat> Hmm. We do find out it is Lupin, which, you know, I mean. You're a wizard, Harry. You're a wizard, Harry, and you're a quirky German, or German, quirky British guy that we don't believe it's you. I mean, that's they hit him very well in plain sight. So this leads to one of my only issues with the film. And and 
I'm going to state this from the very beginning. It is minor. This is not something that like hurts the film to me. But when he finally reveals that he's Ares and he floats up Magneto style, which was awesome. Yep. And he's building his armor around him and the helm is just still fiery hot and he sticks his fingers in and he pulls it down to give himself like eye visors. Man, you saw Remus Lupin's face. And it's a <laughs> fucking twerpy Brit under there? Jesus Are you Christ. fucking kidding me? Wow, this Pulled is... Pulled me real. right out of the movie. Really? Wow. Instantly. I was like, give me at least dark-skinned, fiery no. eye. Like, I want a fucking God of War. And I got... Remus Lupin. <laughs> Thank you. No, because... They're trying to make the gods look like humans. Oh my like, god! Okay, so you know Diana is. I could know about the mustache. Yes, it just, it's just. But that's the thing is. Remember when they did a little flashback of him as young Ares, like being cast out, like by yeah. Zeus, and it was kind of a buffed up <laughs> Remus Lupin. Yeah, he still had the face and the hair. And you're like, did they CG? So he was like, I'll let you CG me young, but I have to look ripped. Like you have to make me look. I was never this strong. Let me just put that out there. But you're gonna make me look like I was. No. So it was it was just one thing that I wished they had just gotted him up a little right. more. That's like, okay. You're picking, but at, like I said, but does very minor. Does, the man is an actor. He wants his face on screen. If you were an actor, you'd want your face to be seen. You don't want to become a big but, CG nothing. But he makes this armor. The, the armor is badass. Like you have to at least get through oh, that. Like from a distance when you don't see who it is in there. Oh my goodness. <laughs> he. W- I was like, oh, that's a fucking awesome Aries. Just because his eyes are little red, show him, like in the face, I'm like, oh look, it's this, some little Brit dude cosplaying. This is literally an act. Of, this is <laughs> this is when you know that you nerded too much, nerd. Yes, you are. This is the uh, of all the things to complain right. about. This is what you choose. The, there are other problems with this Diana movie too. Hold me out. It just literally so pulled does, me out of the it, movie. It amazes me sometimes what you choose to hate, but you know what? <laughs> it's pretty funny sometimes. So, you, so you, Diana didn't look like a god, but spoiler alert, she's a god. Yup. I can still Another see her issue. face. Right, you can see I, her I, face. I get kicked out of a... Another issue that I have... Are you just going to bring up all is your issues now? Is she... Good. Is she full-blown god? Or is she, like, as guardian? She's a half-god. Are, are you not familiar with Greek mythology? No, Hercules he's... a half-god. No, because he says to her, the only, per, the only thing that can kill a god is a god. And that's why she can kill him, because she's a god. Yeah, half-god. Not god. a half-god. No, half-gods are still gods. And then, the no, no, because, she, no, because her mother didn't tell her... A whole story. She said that that Zeus gave us a god killing weapon. That's her. She's a son so of Zeus. Zeus created her. Zeus. Not not through impregnant. His we all know we read in Greek mythology. Zeus took many forms and pregnant many women. He literally returned to a bull. Sometimes it got creepy. Grease. It got creepy. A little, little creepy. Grease. So, but this was literally he created this, not with another person. That was like his dying his dying creation, according to the Amazonians. Was creating Diana. Are you implying that Zeus's like last gift of magical power was just making Diana, and he died, and she is the new Zeus? No, she's a new god. Well, so yeah, is, she's a god, but she's still half. I don't think she's she half. Out of I don't think a half god could defeat. Ares. She can't be a full god because if she is a full god, why is there the need for a Justice League? Yeah. Why is there a need for Superman? Why is there a need for Batman? Yeah. Why is there a need for Cyborg? Yeah. You don't need it because if she is a full god, I win. Yeah. <laughs> She's the win button, but she also and she's not. She also doesn't have her full powers yet. She doesn't know her true ability. She's Herculean half god. It's how DC works. If in DC, half gods are pretty much well. That I'm strong. just I'm just and saying immortal. I'm, she's I'm, immortal. I'm just saying. Well, that that I that that part bothers me a little bit because if you're immortal, why do you grow up? Like you have to start somewhere. But that, that's you always turn immortal that's, when you hit the magical age that's, of twenty-one. That's how, always been my issue when they always talk about immortal stories. Like they show babies and they grew into an immortal. I was like. Yeah, well, they age. You are born, you start dying. <laughs> right. it, you, you aged. Like, why is Odin so right. old? Like, you aged. When do you stop getting Well, no, old? they do age. Yeah, as guardians As guardians age. In the age. Marvel Universe, right, as guardians That's age. a little different, because they're as guardians, they're not gods. They don't die. They go into the Odin sleep. They, they, they regenerate. Back they regenerate. They regenerate. Yeah, but they're, it's not that they're not, they're not immortal naturally. They go, yeah, exactly. It's science so advanced, we think it's magic. Right. Right. Um, <laughs> that's the chiming sound of your... Fully charged. <laughs> you are now 25. <laughs> All right. So I do agree with that. But I also think the only time we see Wonder Woman go full blown like God is when she sees, spoiler alert, Steven die. She doesn't go full. Die. She doesn't go full, you know, like Steven Trevor. She I believe go full, he's dead. Yeah. Oh, he's dead. They don't show the body, though. 
movie rule. Is supposed to die. Like this is not. He is. A, yeah. Oh, he's dead. He, he shot that plane full of gas. So the, the explosion didn't kill him. The gas killed him. Like one of the two. I mean, if you want him back in a Wonder Woman sequel, he's gonna be like 113 years old. So right. Exactly. Tell you. So that's the only point we see her go like ape shit on Ares. You know, start like dodging everything, beating them up. You know, actually taking out all the Nazis that are still around. And, and she that was on. She flies. She flew, dude. And and she absorbs any lightning attack that Ares has, which I didn't know Ares had a lightning attack. Ares is the god of war. His, right. He gets stronger the more people fight. And he can do whatever the crap he wants because right, he's I, a god. I always thought that was kind of Zeus's MO. He killed the other gods. He killed oh, I know. the pantheon. He, he didn't kill Zeus, but. Um, in the DC universe. In I know, but whatever. Okay. <laughs> Not the point. What I'm saying is she just takes that and absorbs it and gets stronger. Where every other god that he's on this too is destroyed. That's her power. Right. And we get to see her just pretty much shoot a giant hole through Ares' chest. She literally burned a fucking like three foot hole through his chest. You could see, you'd wave yourself on the other side. Yep. Like it was brutal. And then everything does turn. Good again. Yeah, all the little 16-year-old Germans of the German Empire. This is World War One, not World War II. Yeah. They're not Nazis. These are just German Empire soldiers. They were probably conscripted little kids. Wonder Woman kicked... Oh, my God. Wonder Woman killed a lot of 16-year-old kids that didn't want to be in a war. Hey, they deserved it. So somebody oh, posed what? a question. A friend of mine posed the question, does World War Two now not happen in the DC universe? Because uh, she killed the God of War. You never kill the God of War. In the DC universe, every time she kills Ares... There's another fuck. The evil in man's heart brings war. Every time war comes back, he regenerates. And I think she kind of mentions that too. She says, yeah, they do have all these bad things, but there's a lot more to them. And so I think, yes, while you kill Ares, it does get rid of a lot of the anger and animosity and the war in the world. But I think mankind still has it within them to be bad. Regardless. (laughs) (laughs) Game must be going. Oh, boy. Oh, little giggles upstairs. Little giggly. Um, yeah, no, I, I get it, but at the same time, like, they, that's why, like, it war ended and the armistice actually happened and peace for a long time. And then people start getting mad again. And Ares starts getting back. stronger and stronger okay. to the point where World War II happens. And so, Ares come back. So you should, maybe gods don't die. They just go into the mist and the wind kind of thing and they're, something they're can bring them back. The, the, in the DC universe, the, the Greek god pantheon got stronger the more people believed in them or did what their affinity was. Okay. Ares is basically a psychic vampire of hate and warfare. So basically when Hitler came back around, he fed off all of that hate. Yeah, he was like, thanks. No, no, no. I'm right here in my belly. Guess what? I'm back. Right. Okay. I can, I can, I can dig it. So Wonder Woman has to stay in the world to keep fighting when Ares makes his resurgence. But you know what I'm really excited about? The fact that Ares is revealed to be real at the end of this movie means the Greek pantheon is real. Right. Which means we're going to get Wonder Woman movies where she fights like the Cerberus or Hydras and like the Medusa and like Hades and like all that cool shit. So this opens up a door for another, uh, the, the magical or spiritual or whatever you want to call it side of the DC universe. The way Doctor Strange opened Mythical. up magic yeah, but for Marvel. The rumor for uh, the next Wonder Woman, it will be set in contemporary modern time. And uh, the word going around uh, the villain will be Cheetah. Cheetah? Yeah. You could still have Cheetah and then do, like, other... Yeah. Well, didn't Cheetah try to steal a gift of the gods and got cursed instead? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Yeah, That's... think of uh, Indiana Jones when he's stealing the golden idol. She's <laughs> going after an artifact. She forgot her sandbag? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah cursed for, Cheetah. Cheetah. So, ta-da. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. I mean, so I think we all agree, and we've taken several we, with our with us to see this movie. Women who have also agreed this is probably, if not the top comic movie out, like ha- that has come out both Marvel and DC. I'd say this and Man of Steel. It's like good, top perfect two tie, perfect tie. At the top. Well, well, just this year alone, I would say uh, to me personally, and I you'll probably agree because I'm going to make you go watch Logan right now. Yeah, Logan is are. still towards the top. Okay, Wonder Woman is right there with it. Yeah, and Guardians is right there. Oh yeah, and. And me saying Guardians is three is not as an insult because it too is still great. I'll give them this. I feel like with every one that comes out right now, things are getting better. Like I, I the least, there's been like a good solid line of three years. Like that's probably one of the best. That know that one. Damn it! Like stop making such good movies. And now DC's fully jumped in. 
I yeah. think they're they're completely competitive with it, all it those. It felt like now. something kind of turned with. Them. Oh yeah, and yeah. it made me extremely hopeful as much. And happy. I mean, I enjoyed man. I enjoyed man, Batman versus Superman. Um, I had a lot. I had a lot of more issues with that movie than I do with this one. So like, I I feel like this to me is like the the out. You know, I I'd say it's better than Dawn of Justice. Yeah, it's it, definitely better than Dawn of Justice. But it's not okay. But but man, it's man of Steel, man. It's like the Iron Man one. It's just, it's that good. To me, it doesn't do a lot for me. It's you know, Man of Steel is good, but I think this I had way more to a character. I'm biased. Or, yes, you are. <laughs> I'm just gonna admit this right now. I'm biased. Don't to, get me wrong. So ladies. I'm not. And that's why. I, that's what I'm trying to say. Is like I, love I have no attachment to Superman. I have no attachment to Wonder Woman. I never yeah. have. Never will. But when I saw Man of Steel, when I saw Wonder Woman. I could be a I could be a diehard Wonder Woman fan now. I am diehard. I love the Trinity, right. man. Right. I've always this, been a big. This fan. This is coming from a Marvel fan who doesn't have really an attachment to e- to the DC universe whatsoever, outside of like the Dark Knight, the Dark Knight, the Dark Knight. Let's, let's which was just right. ahead of Man of Steel. So let's. Right. Read, I think what one thing we all super agree on is it's really awesome to finally see <laughs> puns <laughs> super. <laughs> it's wonderfully awesome to to see, finally see a movie um, with a female lead. Absolutely. In the superhero genre, like this is, and Wonder Woman is a huge part of the of the DC universe. But I also want to say too, like, it's not just good for being a female hero; it's good for a hero, definitely. So, but so I mean, but there's a lot of people are talking about the buzz. This is kind of a progressive idea because obviously, it's this is the first one, right? So, so do you think that this is going to create opportunities that? For like in the, in the in the film industry, like now, like we're seeing a woman like headlining a major blockbuster summer movie. Like, are we going to see more female directors, more hell, more actresses? Taking, I mean, like, roles? Marvel's going to have Captain Marvel come out very shortly, and I guarantee you, they just watched this movie and went, "All right, there's the bar. It's on. There, there well, it is." So, and I, I don't Captain know. Marvel, you're up next. I feel like Marvel doesn't really have a strong enough female character for this. Sorry. I don't even think a Jean Grey movie could hold up. I, I, Marvel is not good at this kind of thing. You read a lot of X Men comics, a lot of that stuff. Like, it's, it's, it's not, it's not exactly like nice. Like some of the tropes you see of women in the Marvel universe. So I don't think they're going to be able to pull off a Wonder Woman. If they do, it's going to come off wrong. So I feel like Marvel has I mean, a huge chance to misstep here. They could do a Miss Marvel or Captain Marvel. Yeah, they are. And I think Brie Larson is. No, I'm not, I'm not saying. That it's it, right off the bat, they're going to match this. No, but I think if Marvel has shown us anything, is that they want to do something, they do it well. We haven't had much bad Marvel. Mm. Not like we've had bad DC. Oh, uh, wait a minute now. Wait a minute now. No, no, no. Age of Ultron is a bad movie. No, it's not. Age of Ultron is a bad movie. Age of Ultron could still beat out Batman vs. Superman. Nope. Nope. Yes. <laughs> nope. Yes. Nada. Nine. Uh, I'm just, you, yeah. can, you can go German all you want. <laughs> Shiza. And no. I'm just saying, you hate it strictly the fact that it's there are superheroes fighting villains. That's it. So I'm not even going to get into this it's, argument again. I slept through it. That's it fine. So that was the second time I tried to watch it. That's okay. I've seen this before. <laughs> you wasted your money, not me. Iron Man cannot keep this entire franchise alive forever, sir. There are going to have to be some changes made and soon. And they are. I mean, we, we can talk about that after this, but there are some changes. You know, they are going some progressive, you know, a little bit. Well, I'll, I'll tell you this. They have a lot of opportunity. If they do it right, great. But Captain Marvel in the comics is not, a, it, she's kind of, well, I don't know. She's not, she's no Wonder Woman. Well, no, because Wonder Woman was built, you know, off of the, the Trinity. I mean, it was the Stapleton of their whole base. There's no female character on the Illuminati. Right. In the X-Men. Right. Now, the Illuminati is a... Uh, a super high-end group of the greatest minds and mutants and powers on the planet. It's like Professor X. It's uh, Doctor Strange, uh, Mr. Fantastic. Uh, I think the Beast took over after Professor X. And um, Namor, because he's Iron a king. Man. And Iron Man. Like, these are the greatest minds in the world. They had made a secret society to do, like, things that they thought to help the world. Right. There's not a woman on this team. Right. It's the only Which, I, I do agree, that kind of shows to Marvel's creation of their heroes. Because they don't usually give female heroes... The most powerful abilities. They are usually good, but you know, Jean Grey. Yeah, Jean Grey. I mean, you is, did mention the one. Yeah. Jean Grey <laughs> is an amazingly powerful character. Yes. But the problem with Jean Grey is she's super powerful when she's being an evil, heinous bitch, the Dark Phoenix. Jean Grey's power when she's normal is sort of like nerfed and still kind of like calm. Why isn't she like Phoenix strong and not trying to kill everyone? Right. 
So I, I mean, I, I could, sorry. I feel like Marvel's yeah. female characters are super. I, and I can agree not with that. Good. And they got Psylocke. Psylocke is kind of portrayed as she, she, she was a. Okay, I'm just gonna say the word. She was kind of a hoe in the comics. She broke up. She, she had Scott Summers, Cyclops, cheat on her with. Uh, against Jean Grey when they were married, and Cyclops was told, and Cyclops has always been a douchebag. So, oh yeah, he's but but, she but Psylocke, why would you make Psylocke like do do that? Like Psylocke wouldn't maybe she had like a cooler code than that. So I don't think they treat their female. They have their female characters do actions and do things that like are stereotypical of like this type of negative female mentality. Well, and I, I think they changed so that with like Captain Marvel. I mean, I don't really ever see her being portrayed She's as... She's the villain of Civil War Two. I know you guys didn't read it. It's well, yeah. Garbage. Well, we can't we can't read all of their uh, continuations of their worlds. I don't. I have okay. I'll give them a chance, but right now, like they're not. I don't like what they're showing me. Right, and it's one of those things. We'll see what we get. The into. villain of the next Thor film is a female. Hey, Hela. Well, Hela. that that is a big Thor villain. Queen of Hell is a woman, and I'm actually really it's excited me. for that one. So I, I am excited. I am excited again, for like, Thor. Back to the, the original question: Is this going to give you know a female boost to I movies, directors? I so you know why? Because it's making a shit ton of well, money there's right that. Now. But my thing is, the, what everyone kind of hasn't there already been women in other genres creating movies? I mean, yeah, you got well, you've had an, a long list of excellent and accomplished female directors. Okay. But this is a; those are like small indie films. Sometimes this is we're talking about a two hundred like fifty million dollar budget, probably more than that for God's sakes. Like the amount of money that was put into a film like this, like that's that is unheard of. Okay, Patty so Jenkins, like, yeah, if, a huge chip. If 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 we if we were taking into consideration the scale of this movie, I mean, I think. I think there is a time for change of the guard. Let you know equal opportunity to get everybody. I think it should be based on how good of a director you right, are. Right, exactly. And we we do get away from that a lot of times because you know directors are usually older men who have been here for. Frankly, they've gone through those ages with film them. producers, yeah. people who own like the, the sets. We're talking about like Fox, Warner Brothers. These are run by men who pro- are probably been around for a long time. Yeah, that, and uh, these are new ideas. Right, exactly. So I think it is time. You know, and she proved she can hold her water with anybody. You know, and, and you know, I don't, you people just out there. Just the sequel, bro. Right, exactly. And people out there say, well, Zack Snyder was involved. So there was some, you know, involvement of an already proven director. I don't think that's not, I don't think that's what anyone meant. I don't think anyone said Zack Snyder, like, helped make this film. I think that she is a good enough director that she took Zack's, like, overall, uh, what's the word, like, atmosphere of right. the other films. And had her own take on it, but still made them blend almost flawlessly. Okay. I feel like these movies belong in the same because universe. Because Snyder helped write this. So, you know, we do have that proven director who's made great movies. Yeah, present. he's writer-producer on this, so, so he definitely had his influence but on But I just don't want people to, like, take that as the only, like, oh, well, he's involved too, so obviously he need, she needed help, you know, kind of thing. No, I don't want no, that yeah. to ever come that out. That was a Patty Jenkins yeah, boot. Like, the dialogue, the, the look, the feel. Okay. You could definitely tell it was her. I enjoy this movie well, immensely. And, and I look forward to the sequel. I want to see another Wonder Woman movie. I want to see Justice League. You know, I want to know how they're going to, you know. Keep it coming. Like, if, if this is the direction that they're going to take the DC Universe now, then just, you 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 are good. Keep going towards the right. North Star. Yeah. And I hope they don't mess it up. I hope they don't try to regress or try to do too much in the next films. I mean, Justice League could turn into a pile of crap if they try to cram too much into it. Or if we get Dark or Side. Do enough. Or, we, or we get Dark Side too early. You know, something that could just derail it. So they're trying to they're trying to jump the gun. You know, trying to get you know a little too further than they need to. I'm kind of hoping for like this to be a so okay. So hear my theory on this one. Dawn of Justice. The last 20 minutes of this film is pretty much death of Superman. We can all agree on this. And like the middle part of the film is right, like they the finally got, they finally yeah. got to kill. Superman. Superman, yeah. So Justice League is going to be just like Dawn of Justice, where it's a coming together of these characters, and like the last 30 minutes of the film will be the return of Superman. Okay. So I, I hope that's right. I hope, my hope is that we don't see Superman the whole movie. We see the Justice League forming together around, because they know, Bruce knows he's not strong enough to take on everything, because obviously there's things like Superman out there, and like Wonder Woman, that he can't compete with. So he's, it's good to see a Batman who admits his weaknesses. Right. And so he forms this thing together. And then we see them the invasion. We see them trying to fight off the invasion, failing. 
and then Superman comes back. Yeah, I think that I got this, guys. Right. That'll, that'll be your pivotal moment where it's going to look like they're Looks finally bad. defeated. Yeah. Like Steppenwolf has this army of parademons, and he's like, "I'm here to usher in Dark Side," and it's just going to look bleak. And then boom, 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 boom. And they better give us a sunny Superman. And <laughs> we'll also get that same appearance of, in, of the Green Lantern Corps. They'll finally right. get I think, I think, And I can't wait to see that because I want to see Hal Jordan and Bruce Wayne's interactions. I think Green Lantern Corps... Okay, we all can understand Green Lantern's had a shady past when it comes to movies. Ryan Reynolds, you were the greatest Deadpool. Nobody else should ever be Deadpool. But you were dealt a bad hand for Green Lantern. This yeah. movie is not good. The best thing about it is Sinestro, and he's on film for oh about like in ten minutes, maybe, yeah, right? Maybe. So yeah, I, I'm excited. Green, green I, I'm not not just for Green Lantern Corps. I want the Lantern Corps. I want Indigo Tribe. You know, I want Star Sapphire. I want I want the bad ones too. You want a Green Lantern trilogy or more movies for that matter? That's I want. Life. I want them to do Darkest Night. You want to do Sinestro? It's got to be the Sinestro Corps War, and that leads to War of Light, and then it's the. Uh, the dark, yeah. What is it? Blackest night. Blackest night. Yeah, sorry. Blackest yeah, night. sorry. Yeah. No. Yeah. You got. You just made like five or six movies right. for them, Sweeney. Good yeah. job. You so it. it's there. I'm excited for that because again, Hal. We all. I. I, th- I want to see that they get Hal Jordan. I don't know if they've announced that. If they haven't announced okay. any of that yet. But if they can get a good Hal Jordan, oh Nathan my. Fillion. I mean, yeah, Nathan Fillion in his heyday would have been perfect. Yeah, I mean, He's a little old now, but they're old this film too. So maybe they could bring him in because you know Bruce is pretty old, and Bruce and Hal are roughly. Same time period. Right. I mean, credit to them. I, mean, you know, they already have somebody picked. If if it's already been filmed, that they're keeping it on. Hush, they're, yeah. that oh yeah, they're Justice it out. League. The fact that it has not come out yet, who it is, kudos, and right. especially in this day of age, right. who's going to be John Stewart? But no, nobody. Hey, knows. No. Who's going to be my favorite Green Lantern, Guy Gardner? Oh, oh boy, <laughs> football. The football, the Michigan football oh, ginger oh, Green Lantern. It's even worse because it's from Michigan. Bowl cut. It's, and, it, and he's a total jerk to everybody, too. Like, they literally created a Green Lantern that has nothing redeeming about him. <laughs> Leather coat with his pop collar. Oh, my God, it's really? Yeah. douche. Yeah. So, I will say, for me, Wonder Woman gave me more excitement for Justice League than Batman versus Superman. That's fine. You're entitled to your opinion, even when it's wrong. <laughs> no, I think that I think that Dude, Wonder Woman has me. Stoked. I mean, I am I'm, Wonder Woman's I'm amazing. Because Donna Justice had had no, no, and I'm not saying I'm not saying Dustin, Donna Justice was bad. What I'm saying is, I was worried Wonder Woman would be bad. There's no way this movie could have been bad. Oh, it could have been. It uh, you don't put it past DC to put shit and see if it on your No, I feel like there's no way DC would let this screw up because there's a lot of riot on oh, the I know. success of this film. But you never know how, you know what I mean? I'm just saying they could have done something way off. But not. It, w- it wasn't just like good enough. It was like it blew me out of the fucking water. It's one yeah. of the best superhero films ever made. Our like, last podcast period. we mentioned, you know, with Jeff Johns finally being like that that figurehead of, hey, here's where this, this story needs to go. All these movies yep. need to go here. And we said that, you know, Joss was coming in. And we we thought they've righted the ship. Yeah, we, hopefully. we said that. And we said Wonder Woman will tell if it did. Yep. It's Yay! Old, it did it. <laughs> and that's the thing is, like, I don't, I don't remember. I don't, so for me, Marvel guy, I did not get this emotional about a movie since Iron Man 1. <laughs> Honestly, like I Iron Man 1. For, no, I'm, I'm scoffing because I believe you. Right. <laughs> Iron Man 1 for me was like, Fucking thank you, God. You've just delivered this gorgeous being into my life. Like, <laughs> That's how I felt about Man of Steel. I know your feels. So, and, and, for, and if you they don't know, it's a personal level for me why I love Iron Man. It's a very personal, something that happened to me in my life that makes me like it even more. So, for this DC, I don't really care about DC Universe. You know, I like the characters, I like the comics. Okay, cool. For this character and this movie and this actress and this director to make me feel the things I felt, I got the chills. I got goosebumps. Oh, I almost yeah. started crying. It was so beautiful. I, was I think my wife. I, I'm not being like have. sarcastic or corny. Like I, I was literally yeah, welling was up because I was like, "Oh my god, this is gorgeous. This is amazing. I love this." It was just finally great to see this type of story told because yeah. this is a whole. Not even from a from a comic book standpoint, this is just a whole new world of DC. Like that they can introduce. Like it's yeah. a very rich world. But from another stand, seeing like that, on, I felt like I was watching history. You know, like, yeah. Like, we're trying to move forward as a society, and this type of film was, like, a great step in the right direction. And because, let's be honest, most people don't even fucking read books anymore. They watch movies. Right. So if we're going to teach proper, like, ideals and morals, we have to do so through film. I agree. And plus, in the 
the era we are in right now with our current president mm-hmm. and current populace who thinks they can say whatever they want to say because of current president. It's refreshing and nice to have this progressive film. This, this, uh, I hate calling it progressive because what, what year is it? Like, we, <laughs> 2017, we, yeah. it should just be the. Yeah. Not, it, it's, it's ridiculous. But anyway, you know what's really funny? You saying that, one of my, one of my best uh, friends, uh, her name's Amber, said that this film, like, she felt like there were some parts that were not cool. Like, like the shopping scene. And I, I think about that and I guess I really can, I'll never fully understand the point of view. I am a, I'm a guy. I'll never truly understand the, 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 how that looks or feels. I don't, I look at this movie and I really feel like they were trying to paint the type of things that the everyday woman in like Britain at the time would experience and throw these at like Wonder Woman. Right. And off of her reaction, we're like, look how ridiculous. Right. And yeah. that's what I, was, I was just going to say that. Like, I, I can see the shopping scene being, okay, why they have to do that? You know, why would they do this? But that's what the times were. Right. Like, this film was actually very accurate to the times. Uh, it You could disagree with it. Right. But it happened. To, yeah. And it's, that's the point. They wanted to show you, like, this is happening. This is what happened then. How look how much is still kind of happening, guys, and look how ridiculous this is. Yeah, exactly. How many times that word was dropped was accurate. (laughs) Um, So let's talk about. um, So the the scene where she goes shopping, and she's in the she's in the clothing store, and they're like her his assistant is like dressing, like giving her clothes and stuff, and the whole time she's like trying to like do kung fu. Right, exactly. Stupid. Yeah, I can't fight fight in this. Like. That that is, a, I think, an important scene, and it's not meant to be. Oh, look how much fun Diane is having shopping! What a chick! I think they're trying to show, yeah, like, yeah. You, take, you take this woman who is a powerful woman, a warrior, and, and it, yeah. she doesn't have to be what you think she needs to be. She's looking at like, how does this serve what I'm going to right. be doing, which is kicking a wholesale German ass. Exactly. I think that they meant it to be. They meant it, the front of it to be offensive. But her to kind of counter and show the audience, hey, look, this is ridiculous. Stop acting this way. So yeah, I mean, so I, I I'm surprised that I took this stance with 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 her. So yes, I'm sorry, I disagree with you. <laughs> well, and that's, and and obviously she's entitled to her opinion, and I can I can I like I said, we're not women. We don't you know we'll we don't have really that pressure that. on us like that men have put on women for ages because we're pigs, and you know that happens sometimes. <laughs> And it's terrible. So we don't, we're never going to know that. We're never going to understand that. But I do think this scene tried to not make light of it, but tried to show that you can do whatever you want to do. If you're, if you don't want to agree with what you, what they want you to wear, what they want you to do, don't so, uh, stand so, up, you know, kind of thing. I'm glad they uh, mentioned the suffragette movement through, uh, yeah. through Tre- Steve Trevor's assistant. Like that was an important thing going on at the time. Uh, I don't, I mean, it, it was many, many years after that it actually right. came through, but yeah, I, I feel like this movie hit a lot of really important points and did it in a way that wasn't like offensive or overbearing or, and I don't really feel like at any point in time they sexualized or oppressed Diana. Like, I don't feel like the movie at any point in time, like made her a sex symbol. She was just a hardcore God, badass superhero who was just cleaning up the streets. Yeah, and uh, and I've heard some people talk about like that they need to add a romantic partner for her, and I can see that. Like, why why would they need to do that? But they do that with men movies too. Like, I can see why hero... because I've read the comic books. <laughs> yeah, it's, so it's part right, of the story. Hey, bandwagon fans. That was her romantic interest right. from her fucking origin story. So. Yeah, you, you can't have, shut your have mouth. That. <laughs> somebody <laughs> oh, said something to you. Someone oh, fight me. Did, you go, did somebody at work tell you that that was like stupid, that they had a love story? And you were like, fuck you. No, this is like the, the first complaint I've heard of it. Well, not me. I'm not complaining. No, no, not you. Okay. So, <laughs> oh, fuck you. Fuck you, buddy. <laughs> um, no, so. That was I've read that some places, and the, I think the I don't know if the writer or director actually came out and defended that. And they said, "Well, you know, every other superhero has a love interest. Like if they're man or female, they they might have love Dudes interest. Dudes like love too. Right. Women like love. Guess what? We're human. We like and love. I, and I think they developed it so well is because it, it was never intended to be like that. Like, you know, for them, it was logistically she was naive, wanted to go kill Ares. She thought she was going to walk out to the front line. There'd be Ares." 
and she's gonna kill. But she's not naive because she's right because Ares is real. Right, but in her, you know, you know, in her mind, she was the, he. She kept saying, "Take me to the front, take me to the front," and she literally thinks like there's just like battle fighting, and everybody's like, you know, punching it's, each other. It's and a big Ares, riot, a worldwide riot. Right, and Ares just standing in the middle of it. <laughs> Nailed it. Right. So, and then we get him, and he genuinely wants to just protect the situation, make sure she is okay because she's out of her element. And he discovers he doesn't have to. And it, then he starts to find out how you know, this woman is this great, intelligent, gorgeous, powerful, all the things that he wanted ever to have, and it's right in front of him. And it's kind of like melds well together. Well, adios, muchacha, because he went off and oh, yeah. killed himself five Not minutes later. But he's dead oh, now. And he's can I point now. out a pretty massive loophole, plot hole in this film? So when she's near the explosion... Mm-hmm. And she goes like tonight. It's like meep, meep, meep. Like, right. She can't hear her, her ears are ringing right. from one explosion. And like oh. Steve Trevor's just like voicelessly like blah 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 blah. Well, no, because that how was... does she remember that later? Well, she couldn't hear. Him. How do you remember something you couldn't hear? I don't know. Exactly. Nobody knows because you can't remember. So that. we don't. We don't know how gods work. Maybe they have like recall. Okay, now. I mean, okay. <laughs> So the, the one explosion was not one explosion. It was several warheads and one giant warhead. Oh, I'm not so debating the strength one, of no, these I heard, explosions. I heard Eddie say after one explosion, I was like, well, this It was is not- one firecracker. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Someone with a fan of fireworks. This, like, like, this, this was a crate full of warheads, and she threw an even bigger warhead at all of them. Yeah, like, look, this, I'm, not gonna, I'm not debating the size of the explosion that deafened her. I'm debating that three minutes later she remembered what she couldn't hear when she was but, deaf. But you also saw how Ares was able to show her the past or show her a dystopian past into a nice future kind of uh-huh. thing. So, <laughs> so maybe they gods have some ability to recall, you know, what was, what could be kind of thing. Or kind of like how Zod showed uh, Clark the the oh, future when he's yeah. standing on the skulls. skulls and he was like reborn Krypton on the yeah. dead of Earth. Right, exactly. Where cool. Ares like, no, yeah. it's like flowers and trees. Right. And- Sunshine, lollipops, and rainbows. So maybe somewhere <laughs> in that kind of, you know, ability, she can. Uh, uh, well, sure. I mean, whatever at this point, because the movie was amazing. Balls, it had its Maybe balls, that was just so. for us to know what he said. Maybe, maybe like we get to know, and one we will always wonder. Right. She's that was a, a wondering woman. That was a bad pun. Uh, it's terrible. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think after that pun, we have to end the show. So yay. <laughs> So, tell us what you thought. Did you love it? Hate it? Whatever. If you hate it. Yeah, we'd love to hear stupid. what you guys thought. If you want to post on the Facebook and sometime and just, hey, what'd you see? Think about the movie. We'd love to hear what you got going on. Absolutely. All right. Well, until next time. I'm Phil. I'm Sweeney. And I'm Andy. We're the Hateful Geeks. Mm-hmm.